High school was the first time that I remember hearing the saying that when you assume, you make a blank out of you and me. And while 9 out of 10 dads will likely say this at some point in their lives, it imparts a valuable lesson about taking your time and avoiding conclusions without proper evidence. So why when it comes to deciding your financial fate, do we wheel out a tool that deals almost entirely in potential guesses based on assumptions? Well, let's talk about it. In this video, we're going to discuss what a Monte Carlo is, what it does in financial planning, and three reasons each on why it matters and why it may not. Hey everybody, I'm Curtis Crossland of Subtle Crossland Wealth Advisors. I help folks build more tax efficient retirements. So let's get after it. Monte Carlo. So what is this thing and how does it work? To put it simply, a Monte Carlo for financial planning is a technique that uses random sampling and statistical modeling to predict a range of possible future outcomes. It will run these simulations hundreds or even thousands of times, and it's constantly randomizing its variables to determine in which scenarios does it fail to meet desired outcomes. In retirement, the failure would be portfolios going to zero before you're dead. The possible ranges are shown in something that looks like a fan or hurricane chart, showing the possible path of outcomes within different confidence intervals. There's also typically a success slash failure chart that shows the probability of success between between zero and 100%. The goal is to use a Monte Carlo to assess risk and uncertainty in investments and retirement planning outcomes with random variables. These variables can include things like rate of return assumptions, inflation rates, life expectancy, spending rates, tax rates, etc. You can also use this on specific goals. Think things like college savings or building a down payment for a house. And while understanding this can get very technical, the important thing to take away from a Monte Carlo is that while it's not a crystal ball, it's still a valuable tool to try to predict or to understand how assets might change over time. We want to use it to help make better financial decisions so we don't run out of money or miss our ultimate goal. Let's take a quick look at a Monte Carlo as an example. So the example that I want to take a quick look at for the Monte Carlo is going to come over here in our financial planning software. And this can be run for anybody of any age, situation, etc. But this in this particular example we're looking at somebody that is 62 trying to retire living to age 90 and basically the probability of their success based on all their inputs so very quickly some of the inputs that we can see for them here we can see their net worth we can see what they have in terms of their asset base here we can see some of their goals they want to be able to retire here's their retirement spending five thousand per month try to factor in some of these other health factors as well and then when we come over here to the monte carlo we're going to see a few different things but we'll start with their probability of success so the probability of success here is showing us at 71 percent out of 100 percent. and then if we come and look at some of the other outputs of the example Here's where we can see that probability distribution for the Monte Carlo itself. This line in the middle, this dark blue line is the median line. The slightly less dark blue here is the 25 to 75% confidence interval. And then the light blue represents the five to 95% confidence interval. So while we can't say with certainty what is going to happen when this individual hits, you know, say age 80, what we can do is we can look at that median line to get an idea of what they might have in average situations. We can also look at what might happen in some of the better extreme situations up towards the top of that 95%. And then we can also see what might happen in some of the worst situations down in that 5%. The other thing I mentioned it can do is stress testing. So if you have other specific variables that you'd want to look at, how does the probability or output of the Monte Carlo change within certain conditions? Well, here we can see things that might affect it like equity markets dropping and we can toggle this. What happens if Social Security is reduced by a certain amount? What happens if inflation is higher than expected? And so we'll, we'll play around with one of these. Let's say inflation is higher than expected by 5%. What happens in that particular scenario? Well, it reruns the calculations. And then what it will do is it will give us an output for the inflation. And we can see that if inflation is much higher than anticipated on average, that our Monte Carlo shows us with a 2.1% probability of success. We can also do a couple things if we want to try to affect the output of the Monte Carlo with some of these other variables. We could say, well, what if we spend less dollars? So we'll spend $4,000 per month instead of $5,000 per month. And look at this. Suddenly we have a higher probability of success. Our median value has increased. So we can actually come and look at that confidence interval. And we can see that when we come out here to age 80, 
using a lower expense assumption actually gives us a higher median zone, a higher 25 to 75% zone, and then a higher five to 95% zone. And so hopefully this gives you a better understanding of what the Monte Carlo is helping point you towards. So now let's cover three good reasons why a Monte Carlo matters and why we should use it. Number one is to help with uncertainty and variability. You're able to model realistic scenarios and have an idea of what might transpire. You can't choose the exact outcome ahead of time, but can understand a range of outcomes as it relates to your decision making. Like what happens if I buy a boat? What happens if I I move? What happens if I have to pay for a wedding, etc.? Well, Monte Carlo is something that you can't predict on any given year what the exact outcome is going to be, but it should still be something that can help to guide your decisions. The second reason a Monte Carlo should be used is that you can incorporate complex factors that can interact in complex ways. Investment returns, inflation rates, spending needs, life expectancy, life events, even larger infrequent one-offs. All of these can impact how the Monte Carlo will tweak and project over your lifetime. Have no idea what social security is going to look like in 20 years? Worried it might get cut in half? There's a Monte Carlo for that. Worried inflation is just going to keep going up and is actually double digits 20 years from now? There's a Monte Carlo for that. The point is that the tool can incorporate multiple variables and those things can be changed over time. The third reason a Monte Carlo should be used is for the decision making in withdrawals and sustainable withdrawal rates. How do variables outside your control like recessions or poor markets affect what you take out? Does it alter how you would access your accounts? You can use dynamic and complex cash flow models in conjunction with the Monte Carlo as well. Hopefully I've convinced you on the importance of using a Monte Carlo, but let's take a look at three reasons some will argue that a Monte Carlo may not be essential. Number one, it could simply be confusing. The outputs are based on probabilities and ranges that may not be that easy to understand or interpret to the layman. Even advisors may not completely understand all the nuance of the model. I had to do a refresh on the topic for the sake of the video myself. But understanding this tool in context can take a bit of sophistication and understanding of statistical principles. The second reason some may argue a Monte Carlo may not be essential is because the outputs are only as good as the inputs. If you miss any metrics or assumptions, or if life throws you a curveball somewhere down the road, you might have made life altering choices based on data that may no longer be valid. Monte Carlos don't come back and say, hey, you're gonna have a health scare in 15 years that's gonna cost you $200,000. You can force variables like that in on a what if basis, but the tool is not a wizard. And the third reason some will argue that a Monte Carlo is not essential is because of behavioral considerations. It's nice to use probabilities to understand the potential of the numbers, but planning is more than just statistics. Methods of planning that focus more on behavioral finance and personalized advice might be more effective in helping you stay on course than complex simulations. It's great for risk assessments, stress tests, and ultimately informed decision making. But it's not a guarantee of anything, and like any other tool in your tool belt, it should be used in that context and with a greater mosaic of your entire situation so you can make your best decisions. Let me know down in the comments what your thoughts are on the Monte Carlo. Has it helped you? Have you found reasons to argue against its use? And I'd also love to hear what topics you'd like to get my take on. Once more, I'm Curtis Crossland, and if you want to see how we help folks build a more tax-focused and efficient retirement, be sure to check us out at SubtleCrossland.com and subscribe for future videos.